Okay, <laughs> where to begin? <laughs> I think my awakening to the impact of gender inequality was the beginning of HIV. Because most of the science was coming from the US, it was largely based on the risk of men who had sex with men. But in Africa from the beginning, there was a lot of women who were also infected with HIV. So I started to look at, you know, how the social norms affected women and men differently and how that might have impacted also their health. You know, you need to persist because there were moments where it was very, very challenging. You'd go to a meeting and it would be totally gender blind, no sex disaggregated data, no analysis, and it'd be like, no, that's not acceptable. We called it integrating gender into the work of WHOs because you really have to integrate it into how you think, how you analyze your data, how you decide which strategies to use to reach people. Social norms around gender, around sexuality, around, you know, women and girls. These issues are now on the agenda, but they weren't on the agenda. because it documented the different forms of violence, the impacts on their sexual and reproductive health, you know, on injuries, on, on mental health. And that really served to put the issue on, on the global public health agenda. A lot of people say to me, oh, with violence against women, you have so much attention, so much visibility, everybody talks about it. Yes, but this is after 25 years of slogging it away. <laughs> of building that evidence, of being the drip, drip, drip. I think with our new director, we have a very strong uh, commitment to ensure that gender equality, human rights are, are fully integrated into the work of HRP. Mm -hmm.